stranger to us, it is nice to get to know him a little bit better. Van Strange Jr. and his wife Jan have been married for 56 years. They, yes, that's amazing. Uh, I'm 40 years old, so that gives me a lot you know, to look forward to. They have two daughters, and both are teachers. Monda teaches senior English here at Conway High School, and Jennifer teaches fourth grade at Greystone Elementary in Ho Hoover, Alabama. Vance is a native of San Francisco, California. He graduated from Lowell High School, where he was a three-year, four-sport letterman. He played college football at Tulane University in New Orleans, graduated graduated his junior year, uh, st excuse me, starting his junior year, transferred to Hend Hendricks College. Vance earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in accounting and economics from Hendricks in 1963. He later earned a Master of Science degrees from the University of Central Arkansas in political science in 1966 and physical education in 1971. Vance started his teaching and coaching career in the Conway Public School System in 1963. He spent 12 years as a college professor and coach at Hendricks College, the University of Central Arkansas, Henderson State University, and Austin College in Sherman, Texas. Vance was a 26-year veteran at J.A. Riggs Tractor Company, the Caterpillar dealer for the state of Arkansas. Vance was Riggs' resident enthusiast and otherwise known as Coach. In May of 2003, Coach became the eighth director of the Intercollegiate Athletics at the University of Central Arkansas. UCA's Intercollegiate Athletics program consisted of 15 men and women's sports. The UCA Bears were competing in the Gulf South Conference in NCAA Division II. He headed the first three years of the five-year transition to NCAA Division I. UCA is now a member of the Division I NCAA Southland Conference. Vance retired in May of 2006. Vance currently serves on the board of directors of the Conway Fellowship of Christian Athletes Adult Board and the Hendricks College Warrior Boosters Club. Vance has served on the board of directors, and uh, I don't know if anyone has a Snickers bar. Uh, this is gonna take a while. 18 different boards, or maybe I'll just hold up the, the list, okay? Um, please join me in giving a hip hip hooray, rip roaring welcome to the distinguished, honored, and beloved Coach Vance. got off the wrong foot with me. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, and talking about uh, the coming weeks here, <clears throat> uh, it's close to that time again when this community will be invaded by college students and high school students all going back to their respective institutions of higher learning. And traffic will be unbearable, but we'll make it. One of the great things that uh, these colleges, uh, their staffs, their faculties provide us with is a tremendous economic engine, as I've said before here. But in, <clears throat> in getting this all started, uh, I'd like to read a quote uh, how many of you know who uh, or what the name John Heisman means? Ever heard of the Heisman Trophy? Not many of the ladies know what the Heisman Trophy is. <laughs> that goes, goes to the best college football player each year. And the Heisman Ceremony is quite a, it's quite a, a process of the election of that uh, person for recognition. But John Heisman, one of the great quotes when he started <clears throat> coaching his college team. And uh, before they went out to practice two a days, three a days, he said, gentlemen, it's better to have died a small boy than to fumble a football. <laughs> so I'm sure that all of the coaches are getting ready to convey that to the, uh, to the young players that are coming out, whether it's in high school or college. And, and another one, one of my favorite guys, uh, coaches that I 
I really thought a great deal of a guy named John McKay, who coached at USC and later in the pros. I got a chance to visit uh, with Coach McKay several times at some of the football clinics that he conducted. After a USC loss to Notre Dame, in his post-game message to his team, he said, all those who need showers, take them. Which meant nobody put out enough effort to break a sweat. <laughs> so that won't be true here in Arkansas. <laughs> Anyhow, it's my pleasure today to, to uh, introduce to you uh, Coach Buck Buchanan, head coach of the Hendricks College Warriors. Buck has, uh, was hired as, a, as the head coach by Coach Weaver, sitting over here to my left, um, and uh, in a unbelievable search for a coach to come in and start up a program from scratch. I mean, scratch. So, as the first hired football coach in 52 years, March 2012, 20, yeah, 2012, because 13 was the first season. 2012, um, Justin Buck Buchanan came to Hendricks College with one assistant helping him recruit. And uh, they started doing that while the other assistant coaches were being hired. In 2015, Hendricks was ranked 19th in the NCAA in the, <clears throat> in the nation in pass efficiency. And in the NCAA, we ranked 28th in total offense with 472.3 yards per game. Wow. It's pretty outstanding for having a program operating for three years and to achieve that mark. I think the recruiting class that they first brought in uh, for 2013 was an amazing group of young men. And I think that their understanding of carrying the torch uh, and setting the tone for the program uh, for success in the classroom and on the field uh, has passed its way down to the incoming classes uh, in 2014 and 2015. In three seasons, Coach Buchanan has coached 11 uh, all Southern Athletic Association first team selections, six second team selections, and 14 honorable mentions. He also coached 17 Southern Athletic Association players of the week and six D3.com national team uh, of the week selections and two d3football.com all region selections um, and this is absolutely unheard of um, he will talk to you a little bit about some of the outstanding players and individuals uh, but as i know coach buchanan he is all about team he's all about putting things together and doing it as a team and it's really important uh, his experience in rebooting programs came from Louisiana College, where after he uh, played his college football at Austin College, where I did have a privilege of coaching at the home of the Kangaroos, uh, he uh, came to Louisiana College and, and uh, helped restart a program that uh, had been long dormant. I don't remember how many years, but, but, but it was. But, but it was it was a long time. So uh, when, when you see what uh, Coach Buck's all about, you'll have a complete understanding of what uh, Division III intercollegiate athletics and the NCAA means to young men and women. Uh, Hendricks has 21 NCAA sports. I've said this, I think, before, but that's more sports than any other college or university in the state of Arkansas, including the U of A. So I think it's an exceptional program, uh, but the key thing to that is the quality of <coughs> student athlete that they've been able to bring in. I mean, it, it, it truly amazes me to meet and visit with these young people that are part of this program and, and how they fit in to college life and how they fit into We'll see this year as they graduate uh, into their, their community lives. But um, 
I think it's very, very important that uh, uh, we have an understanding of what D3 football is all about. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the head football coach of the Hendricks College Warriors, Buck Buchanan. Well, I should just carry Vance with me here when we go because he can pretty much just give me the introduction. I can come up here and say thanks and leave. So that, that works out pretty good. Uh, I, I do want to, uh, for some of you who may not have been in a game or whatever, we have a little hot video about two minutes. We're going to show that video so you can kind of see what we got going. Then I'll tell you a little story. Maybe it'll make you laugh. And then tell you a little bit about us. You ready? Let's see. Hmm. Shoes off, you're gonna get eaten by the bear. 
I looked up and said, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just got to outrun you. <laughs> so I'll make sure I have my running shoes on. Now, Shane didn't get eaten by the bear. That didn't really happen. But, but what I am getting at is, you know, there's 246 Division three schools. That's what people don't realize. We're the largest division in college sports. There's 246. There's 32 chances to go to the playoffs out of that 246. 26 of those are conference champions. We were a conference champion. We were in the playoffs last year. And we put a ring on everybody's finger. And we're very proud of that. However, that doesn't mean that you have to beat all 246 at one time. We have to go out there and do our job to be the best we can do and the best we can be all the time. And that's what we really want to try to portray to our young men in our program is that you want to be the best that you have and the best chance that you have every day you go out there to be your best and represent you stuff, yourself the best. We have 28 seniors this year in our program. And David McCullum asked me one time, he said, well, how do you start a team from scratch? I said, well, we're going to start with a group of guys and just add flour and mix. So that's what we did. And we, and we tried to build it the right way. And we've been able to do that. It's been great to have the young men that we have. And now we're in a situation where, yeah, we have been successful. We've been successful when no one thought we could even start football, much less be successful at it. So we've been able to do that. We've been able to overcome. But we still have to have this mindset of be our best every time we have a chance to go out there. We only have to beat the, the, the team that's coming to town on September 3rd. And we can't go 2-0 for that 1-0. We've got to concentrate on that one game. Then there's only 10 teams that we play this year. It's guaranteed on our schedule. And we've got to worry about those 10 teams. And we only got to worry about that one that day. And that's no different than we've approached every day of our program from the time we've started. It's be the best we can be when we have a chance to be that. And I feel like, even from this get-go, if we can put our best product on the field, we have a chance to be successful. Which really bodes well to the type of guys we have in Hendricks because we're very, very, very motivated academically, athletically, you know, in our social uh, realm. Everything about our lives, of our guys, they're really motivated to be the best they can be. So we try to capitalize on that. And this, for our 28 seniors, is their last litmus test for life. It's your last chance to go out there and, and go to a fall camp to, to play in a college football season. Most of our guys know that there, there's, not a, there's not a life after football. Coach Neal says this, our offensive coordinator, you know, it's, we spend so much time preparing for so little return on investment in football. You spend all week to prepare for a 60 minute game that mostly runs the clock. And so there's not a lot of return on that. You don't have a lot of opportunities to put the, the show out there for how much work you put into it. So our guys that are seniors, that's a, that's a life lesson. And also, it's a lesson for, for all the younger guys to know that sooner or later, the air is going to be out of the ball, and it's what you have left that really matters. Because you're going to spend a lot of time in your life without football than you did with it. Unless you go into coaching, you get to keep doing it. Because I promise it's nice to not have to go to work every day. It's just fun to do it. But this is the litmus test for us. And hopefully we understand that on a personal level with each of our players so that way we are the best we are when we go out there and play and then when we leave. It doesn't guarantee you're going to win, but it guarantees you the opportunity to go out there and give the best you got to have a chance to win. And I'm crazy enough to believe if, we, if we're the best we can be, we can beat anybody that lines up against us. But it doesn't matter unless we give our best. And our guys' focus this year, I mean, I know in the back of their minds they want to be 10-0. They want to host a playoff game. We want to go deeper in the playoffs. Last year was fun. We, we realized that. We got there, and everybody's like, man, we want to go do that again. I'm not going to say that we should have won the playoff game against Huntington. They were a better football team than us. They had more talent. But we could have won. We were in position to win. We didn't get it done. Everybody got a taste of that, and we have everybody back willing to go do what it takes to get back there and do it again. And not only make our college proud, but make you, you proud. Because we represent Conway. We re represent Arkansas. We represent uh, uh, our community. And we want to be the best that we can be. We obviously, well, we are the best Division three football team in the state of Arkansas. We got that going for us. So we want to make sure we do that every year. But we really want to be a competitive national level. We, we are a nationally competitive school. We're a top 100 liberal arts school in academics. We want to be the same way in athletics. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk just a little bit about that and, and about our team, but, but also to know that we're committed to that. 
Not just, not just in hearsay, not just in what, what we talk about, but if you look at what we've done with our college, we have tried to build it the right way, especially with, with everything we've done in our athletic program. To pro I gotta give a lot, a lot of credit to our administration for letting us be successful. And it goes back to this one poem from uh, Chesterton. It's called The Building. And it's, it's one of my favorite all times. My coach gave it to us every year before we played because everything is based on that. It's called, I watched him tearing a building down, a gang of men in a busy town. With a yo heave ho and a lusty yell, they swung a beam and a side wall fell. I asked the foreman, are these men skilled? The kind he would hire as if you wish to build? He laughed and said, well, I know indeed. Just common labor is all I need. They can easily wreck in a day or two what builders have taken years to do. I asked myself as I went my way, which of these roles have I tried to play? Am I a builder who works with care, measuring life by rule and square, shaping my deeds by the well-made plan, patiently doing the best I can? Or am I a wrecker who walks to town, content with the labor of tearing down? We've tried to incorporate that mentality in everything we do, and that's just another reflection of our campus. If you look at what we've done, you know, if you look at the buildings that have been changed over the last 10 to 15 years at Hendricks, you know, what we've added with the, the, just, just with our part, just with the athletic uh, venue that we have, we can compete nationally with what we have athletic venue-wise. No one comes to our campus and goes, wow, that's, that's not very good. Everybody comes to our campus and goes, wow, I can't believe y'all have this. That's a tribute to our administration back and what we do on our part. But if you look at our SLTC or our new Welcome Center that's going in, it's putting those careful pieces together. It takes a lot to build that. It takes only a little bit to tear it down. But we've done those things that make us successful. If you look at what we've tried to do with our school, we've made college as affordable and accessible to, to young men, especially in our state. Uh, the, the initiatives that Dr. Satsui's done and some of the things has allowed us to have better players with better scores from right here in the state because we are from Arkansas. We are going to get guys from out of state, but we have to represent our community and our state because that's what we are and that's what we have to do. And we've been able to do that and be successful. And those are things that have been put in place that help us. And it's not that we give anybody anything. Everybody has to get what they deserve to come to Hendricks. But with having great facilities, with having those uh, initiatives that can really get good student athletes there, having uh, a great staff and a great support and, and a great academic uh, reputation allow us to say, yeah, it might cost you a little more to come here, but your return on investment is going to be tenfold. And those are things that allow us to get those young men on the, that you saw in that video. And we have great, great young men, not only uh, in the classroom, but on the field. You, you saw Dayton there, number six. He was a little All-American last year. That was the first one in Hendricks history. We, that's Division Two, II, Division Three, uh, all NAI. That's everything. He was the best player at all purpose in the country, and uh, he's pretty special. But it takes a lot of things to happen to to let that guy have a special year. The offensive line we have five starters coming back, 31 games they've started. They make it possible for that guy to to, to play. Our quarterback is an exceptional trigger man. He does a great job of, of making decisions. He's from Greenbrier. He's a local guy, Seth Peters. He's one of the best players in the country. But again, they're not out there by themselves. And then we have a really talented receiver core that, that, that can go up and get the ball. We, you saw those two outside receivers. They're both 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and they're both physics majors and have three, almost three nines. So, I mean, not only do they remember the play, but they actually go catch the ball too. So. <laughs> Those are bonuses. We don't have to teach the play twice. So, I mean, those are things that, that are, that, that I think you, if, you come, if you come and watch this play, you're going to see those type of athletes, but you're going to reciprocate that if you saw them in the classroom. Our defense, we have six senior defensive linemen that are going to anchor our defense. We have everybody returning at linebacker, and we have all but one secondary player returning. We return all but one starter from last year's team. The trick will be to make sure that we're not complacent and say because we did it last year we can do it again. And that goes back into that beating the beating the guys in front of you, not the bear that you have to outrun. And again, I want to say a special thanks, especially Dr. Sue and, and, and Coach Weaver, for allowing us to be successful because it, it can't happen without people above us. We've been able to grow. When we started, I talked to the Rotary Club over at Conway before we even had a player here and told them what we were going to try to do. 
we've been able to do that because they've supported us in that endeavor. We went from 52 players the first year, we'll have 112 in camp this year. And that's systematic. We, we did that on purpose to build into what we wanted to become. We didn't want to be too big too fast. We had to have guys that were engaged in what we were doing on, uh, in the program as well as on campus. Because we've already had a, a president of the, of the student senate. We've had a president of the campus kitty. We've had, we've, we had a winner of the Miss Hendricks contest from people. I mean, well, I'm just saying we, we, we are well-rounded students and student athlete part of it. And that goes to say that we fit well within our campus. And I think it would be hard to find anybody that, that uh, would still doubt what we've been able to do uh, when it would have been hard to find anybody that was really buying into what we were selling at first. And uh, really a special thank you, too, to John Donald back there in his class because they bought into a, a, a vision of faith, not only by us, but our administration, what we were planning to do. Because it's hard to buy into something when you can't see it yet. It's a lot easier for these guys to come to our locker room, see our pictures on the wall, look at that ring and go, hey, I can be a part of a championship program. It was really hard for these guys to come in and say, I believe that we can do it. Now we've done it. Now we've got to make sure we can get back there and do it again. Again, I, I, if you didn't take anything from what I said, hopefully you took, hey, it's, it's a good enough brand of football that you want to come out and watch. The price is right. we got the best price in town for the best show in town. And odds are we, we're probably going to keep you in your seat to the very end. They told us we had to sell the popcorn out in the stadium. So last year uh, at Wash U, you know, we had to let it go down the wire and win 53 to 51. But, you know, so on a block field goal at the end. But just telling you, we, 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 we have some exciting football games. And, uh, and it's always fun to win. So we want to be out there. Uh, we play September 3rd against Austin College, my alma mater. It's the one time we tripped up last year and didn't play our best. We learned a lot about that. I don't think anybody's saying anything coming home from the game. I think we're going to be really excited to go out there and play this year. So I uh, hope that you have a chance to come out and support us and support the kids. And then more importantly that, sooner, you know, it's going to happen real fast for these guys, but they're going to be in the, in the workforce. They're going to be out here being hired next year. You're not going to find better young men than you can find in our program or at Hendricks if you're looking for somebody in your organization. Because we had, matter of fact, we had 40 guys stay this summer, get internships in, in, in Central Arkansas, and be a viable part of our community. It's a, it's a, it's reciprocating. We appreciate your help and support for us, but these kids are going to give back to you just as much as well. So thank you for that, and again, thank you for our administration for giving us the opportunity. Because I've been on a lot of teams that didn't have a chance to win. It's nice to go out there and know that you have a chance every time you step on the field because you got people having your back. Uh, and if you didn't take anything else, hope you listen to building because we can all live our lives like that. Hopefully our kids understand that too. And it takes a lot of work to build something, but it only takes one or two to, to tear it down. And we don't want to tear down what we've started. We came to, I came to Hendricks, our staff came to Hendricks to build a program. Not start football, not start football and win. We came here to build a program. We want to be successful over time. We have a great freshman class coming in. We need those guys supported when they get here. If you see them around town, say thank you for starting the program. Thank you for capping off our, our, our building process. And now we want to continue to go out there and be the best we can be. All right, I'll open it up for questions. So I had a chance to play in Division of Baseball years ago, and you know, you're considered a student athlete, but because of the scholarship, I felt more like an athlete who had to go to class. Uh, with Division Three, is that, is that how, how does that work? I mean, is, is, is athletics the priority for a lot of the players, or is academics? And that's a trick question to Dr. Sixu. No, this, that's, a, that's a very hard question. No, no, this is, this is, a, this is, it is important because it's part of, Man, that's part of why I'm at Hendricks. Is I played in a place like Hendricks. It, it matters to me. I mean, education was important to me, but so was playing football. I loved playing football. For If you were to see our guys uh, out there and how they, you know, it's just as important to be on time and practice and be there <laughs> and do everything that they ask to do as it is to be in class and, and get good grades. And that's probably the biggest difference. I think the other difference is, and it's a recruiting tool that we use because we don't own anybody. You know, we don't sign anybody on the dotted line and say, well, if you don't want to do it, sorry about your luck. I never go across from a kid and say, well, we 
we missed on you. We, we were going to take away your money and give it to this guy, and you may not go to Hendricks anymore. I never have to have that conversation with anybody. So our relationships with our kids are on a real relational level, not on a business model. And I really enjoy that. I think that's my personal wheelhouse. I think I'm better at that. I'd rather have guys that want to be there and want to be a part because they're trying to achieve something greater than saying you've got to do this because we own you. Um, and it's not like that at every scholarship place, but, but that's, that is a big difference. And I think that we have tried to do a good job of creating a culture where people want to be just as you know, uh, accountable in our area as they are across campus. The other thing is we know we're going to have a guy that has to go to have a ranch and, and do something for a weekend one time. We have, to, we have guys that have to go do an internship or we have a guy going overseas in the spring. We got a guy going up study in South Africa this spring. Had a guy in China last year. I mean, those are things that we don't deny our guys the educational opportunity for because we feel like they're going to be just as committed to doing what we're doing on the field as well. But with a mindset of, you're preparing for life after football because this is not what you're doing for the rest of your life. And I think that's, it's a balance, but I also will say that, um, and even when I interviewed and Coach Weaver could tell you, and the committee could tell you that, we don't also want a double standard and say, well, yeah, Bob's gonna have, we want you to win and want you to be accountable to that because you're gonna be a doctor. We don't want you to go out there and go, well, it's okay if you lose because you're gonna be a doctor and be successful. You, there's no double standard there. And that's, that's a fine line. And I think that I think that people that don't have that concept of student athlete have a hard time going back. Like for I'm pretty sure they would have never hired me if I was, wouldn't have been a good student at student part of student athlete at Austin College, a school just like Hendricks. So because I understand that um, and trying to create that culture where that's valued is important. And it's hard at schools like us too because a lot of times people will go, well, it's okay if we lose because we're going to be winners. And that's, that's just not acceptable. We try to make sure that's what the kids understand. I know it's a long answer. Has Dayton gained any weight? Three pounds. <laughs> but we feel good about that because he's been successful without it. Hey, hey, he, he, I'm telling you, you'd laugh at him when he gets off the bus, but everybody cries when he gets back on it because he doesn't look like a football player. He, 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 uh, he's, he's about that big around. But again, he, he want to make you laugh and make you cry. Boy, if that doesn't get your football going, I love it. Uh, Coach Buck, we really do appreciate you being here, and our program has adopted the newspaper and education from the Log Cabin Democrat, and so there will be 50 newspapers in your honor given to local schools here. So thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I have a few announcements that I was told that needed to be announced. Deanna Runyon.